Hi, you fam. Welcome back. Hope you guys are having a great day. I'm Joe. I'm Dan. And we're back with another reaction. It's pitch meeting time in the MCU world. Which one is this, Dan? This week is Black Panther. You mean there's something wrong with this movie? I guess we'll have to go find out what that is. Yes, we shall. Cheers to you, fam. Enjoy. So you have a new script for me? Yes, sir, I do. And this one's all about Black Panther. Oh, very cool. Yeah. So what other Avengers are in it? Oh, uh, none. None. It's just Black Panther. Oh, no. No? <laughs> we don't do that anymore. What do you mean? If you're doing a solo Marvel movie, you need more than one superhero in there. Like how Iron Man was in Spider-Man Homecoming, or how Guardians is about a team of space heroes, or how we put everyone in Captain America Civil War. You don't need War. more. It's just how we sell things now. Well, what about Doctor Strange? Yeah, see, that didn't even make it into our top 10 highest grossing movies. Oh. Yeah, we kind of thought it would sell itself because of the star power of Blemidage Comberbosch. <laughs> right, well, we'd still like to give it a try. You think a Chadwick Boseman-led movie is gonna do better than one led by Bernadette Camberbench? I think it could. <laughs> this is Barnacle Clampersnatch we're talking here. Okay, you're not even trying to say his name right anymore, are you? Yeah, no, I stopped trying. Listen, I think if this movie tells a good story, it could do mm. pretty well. <laughs> All right, so what's the story? Well, T'Challa goes home to Wakanda now that his dad is dead and he's the Black Panther. Oh, and Captain America and Bucky are there. No, they're not. You have to mention them. We showed them there at the end of Civil War. Seriously? Mm-hmm. Okay, I'll throw Bucky in a post credit scene, I guess. Yes. Awesome. So we're good now? That's it? Oh, yeah. Now we're going to be able to sell this movie. Really? <laughs> yeah, now we have that Sebastian Stan star power, so we're good. Yeah. Well, great. So anyway, for T'Challa's coronation where he becomes Black Panther, he has to drink this thing that takes away his Black Panther powers. Wait, he already has the powers? Yeah, he had them in Civil War. Right, but we're saying he's about to become Black Panther. Panther because his dad died. That's right. And to do that, they have to make him not Black Panther anymore? How, how does that work? <laughs> yeah, we're not really gonna explain that in the movie. Oh, but we will explain it in a Black Panther prelude comic, so if fans want to know more, they can pay me money. Exactly. Oh, money is tight. Oh, are you having money problems? No. What? You said money was tight. <laughs> it is tight. Okay, so anyway, T'Challa has to go through this ceremony where people can try to kill him if they want to be king. Whoa. Yeah, they don't mess around in Wakanda. You'd think as the most advanced nation in the world, they'd have figured out a way to move past bloodlines and death fights. Well, it's mm -hmm. tradition, so what are you gonna do? Try not to die, I guess. <laughs> yeah, but other than death fights, Wakanda's a pretty cool place. Oh yeah? Yeah, they have a bunch of awesome stuff like vibranium weapons and cool ships and super crazy technology. Very cool. Also war rhinos. Did you say war rhinos? Mm. Yeah, war rhinos. What does that even mean? War rhinos, like, you know, rhinoceroses of war. If they have vibranium weapons, why do they need rhinos? That's actually a good question. Let me check here. I think I have an explanation. Uh, yeah, because it's awesome. Yes. It sounds kind of silly. <laughs> it's awesome. Yeah, but they... Okay, look, I didn't want to have to do this, but if you don't let me put war rhinos in this movie, I'm going to go on a tweet storm of Infinity War spoilers, so help me God. Oh. You wouldn't. <laughs> I want those rhinos. Okay, look at me. Put the phone down. We'll put the rhinos in the movie. Great. Great, thanks. So what else happens? Well, there's this dude named Claw who stole a bunch of vibranium from Wakanda back in the day and killed a bunch of people and then never aged. Okay. And we see him and this guy Killmonger steal an artifact from a museum that nobody knew was actually made of vibranium. How come they know it's made of vibranium? Because. Okay. And so Claw goes to Korea to sell this vibranium to an American buyer. Where does Killmonger go? Oh, well, he goes away for a good chunk of the movie. Mysterious. Uh, so the Wakandans okay. find out about this deal and they see it as their chance to finally capture Claw. Oh yeah, get some sweet justice. Right, and this guy Wakabi's parents were killed by Claw back in the day. So T'Challa tells him, my man, I'm definitely gonna capture this guy for you. You have my word, I promise. This is gonna happen. I'm gonna do this for you. I swear to God. So that's obviously not gonna work out. Yeah, no, it doesn't work out. What happens? <laughs> well, they do capture Claw, but then Killmonger shows up and helps him escape. Oh, Killmonger's back. Yeah, it turns out he had his own evil plan going on this whole time. Oh, what's he planning? His plan is to kill Claw and bring him to Wakanda to show that he's better than T'Challa. And I imagine it's gonna be hard for him to get into Wakanda. No, actually super easy. Barely, barely an inconvenience. Yes. Really? Yeah, he's just gonna kind of walk in and then immediately run into Wakabi. Oh, that is convenient. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the very first person he runs into is the one that would have the most emotional response to seeing Claw's body, so that works out well for him. But I guess T'Challa can just defuse the whole situation by explaining what happened. You'd think so, like, hey, Wakabi, we did capture Claw, but this guy, Killmonger, attacked the holding cell with explosives. Right, that would defuse things. Yeah, for sure. Anyway, he doesn't do that. <laughs> oh, and as it turns out, Killmonger is T'Challa's cousin, and his dad was killed by T'Challa's dad. Uh-oh. So he challenges him to a death fight and throws him off a waterfall. Whoa. And so Killmonger becomes king, and he wants to send vibranium throughout the world to help oppressed people rise up and- Wait, 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 hold on. What are you doing? What's up? You're kind of developing this villain a lot. Yeah, I guess. Well, that's not really what we do here. Right, but maybe we could, you know, try that. <laughs> You're crazy, man. <laughs> All right, well- 
We'll give it a shot. You're nuts. So yeah, anyway, yes, T'Challa was being kept alive by this tribe called the Jabari. And so he's like, hey, help us come reclaim the throne. And they're like, no, harsh. <laughs> yeah, and then T'Challa goes back and there's a huge fight between everyone. Very cool. And right when it seems like everything's gonna go wrong, the Jabari tribe shows up to help. Oh, good thing they suddenly changed their mind at the exact right moment. <laughs> yeah, it's a pretty <laughs> sudden and great change of heart with millisecond precise timing. And how does it end? Well, then T'Challa and Killmonger have a CGI cat fight and Killmonger <laughs> dies. Wait, are you saying there's a final fight full of CGI where the hero fights a bad guy who has similar powers? Yeah, I guess so. Now that is a Marvel third act. I love it. So you think it'll Sadly, do well? Yes. Well, we kind of have to make this movie to set up Infinity War, but based on what you've told me, no, I don't think it's going to do well at all. Oh. And yet it, it did. And yet it did. Much to their surprise, huh? Kind of smart. My surprise, too. It had a lot of hype. Oh. So yeah, it's like, so you wrote the script intentionally to not explain to Wakabi what happened when you actually did capture him? Why? Yeah, it doesn't make a lot of sense, does it? No, and for that matter, it's like, Wakabi, do you have, like, no emotional restraint over yourself? <laughs> or, like, can you not put two and two together? Do you think this guy's intentionally out there trying to sabotage everything? Well, do you think, do you think, uh, the child is out there literally trying to do that? I don't think so. Come on. I mean, with all the attack, they don't have, like, video footage of him breaking the guy out of prison or anything? You'd think that'd be built into his, like, nanotech, right? Right. But no. And that's one of the things that kind of drives me crazy, too, because the producer guy had an excellent point there. Like, why why do you, need, do you need war rhinos when you have, like, the most advanced tech in all of civilization? Where is your tech at? Because we see it in the suit that Black Panther uses. It's a nice suit and everything. But you don't see it very much outside of that. Like, these people don't have guns. They don't have any, like, flying ships. They have, like, nothing of, like, actual technological value. I thought they did. They actually, are you talking about just the people, like, in the... Hold on. I'm probably going to... I'm trying to get through this so I understand. So, so like when you see like the guards out there outside of outside of the city, they're using spears. Like why are you using spears instead of you no know, a gun or just anything more advanced than that? Well, you remember like because so so remember this sets up like uh, the Infinity Wars movie, right? Uh -huh. So remember they were actually their spears did double as like energy weapons. They actually did fire energy projectiles at the enemy with those spears. Okay, I must have got that part then. Yeah, because I remember seeing that. They actually kind of formed a little shooting line mm -hmm. with their, because like they, they pulled their capes together and formed like a shield, which nothing got through, but then they actually used their spears to fire for energy at the, at the enemy. Oh, well, I stand corrected. That's what I remember seeing. Okay. But yeah, if you hadn't, if they, show, if they didn't show that in the actual, uh, Black Panther movie though, then it's like, yeah, you could have at least made that that clear that you you know these things do have dual use or dual purpose. Right. That could have that could have been much needed information rather than you know still like in barbaric times throwing spears and shit at people. So. The whole thing to me just felt kind of weird because you have this dichotomy of a society that's like really really advanced technologically. But they still have all these old tribal practices. Like you have to fight to the death to become to become the Black Panther. You're like, why? You guys know who the wisest person for the job is. Give them the job. For me, it's like I think I understand why they're having some kind of ceremony there. Mm -hmm. you know, Black Panther is always about choosing the strongest person, but also T'Challa was is the son of the former king, right? Mm -hmm. I think what they were trying to avoid was just nepotism there or whatever because it's like you don't want to have just like somebody succeed the throne because they were born into it right so i suppose that's a fair point which i can get behind honestly but it, it seems like that's what's happened anyway right. so i mean it still feels weird to me though because granted okay what so suppose he does get into this fight and he does lose but he's still a better candidate than the people he loses to like do you really want to base the you know, the leadership of your society on a guy who's just got brute strength as opposed to somebody who's actually intelligent and, and wise and caring and a good leader. No, that's a fair point to bring up. And to add to your point there, it's like you saw this guy come in out of nowhere. Yes, he does have a, a legitimate claim to challenge for the throne. Mm -hmm. But you know who this guy's been out there. Is he really somebody you want to actually go up against this? It's like just because you have a claim doesn't mean you should be be able to do this. Right. The based, man, based on your record, you know? The man has a criminal past. He's been helping your enemies up to this point. He notches his kills into his body. Mm-hmm. That's why they call him Killmonger, so yeah. And just his violent nature alone should make him a bad choice for the job. Yeah, it's like you're, you know, we're trying to be good on the world stage here at some point, so. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It was it was convenient writing for the whole thing, honestly. At the at the time, I thought it was kind of unique the way they did this movie because it was like it's kind of fun watching their society all built up the way it is. Mm -hmm. But when you break the plot down here, there's holes everywhere. Yeah. <laughs>
See, I was kind of, I was kind of mad on the whole thing. Like, I know a lot of people really like this movie, and like I said, I really like the Black Panther suit itself. I love all the tech that they put into it. It's very like James Bond esque. Sure. But at the same time, I was kind of watching this movie like, okay, so that's it, huh? You guys have all this tech, and that's about it. Right. It's the way it went. Yeah. Some people thought it was really good. I'm kind of neutral on it. I haven't watched it since. I'll say that. <laughs> I haven't either. I don't know. You tell us, fam. Did you like the movie? Like to hear your like to hear your thoughts on that too, guys. It could you know it could go either way over here, guys, and we could and we won't lose any sleep over it. Right. So yeah. Yeah. So, so I'm right there with the producer guy. Like I kind of I'm kind of surprised it did as well as it did. But then you know that's my taste. You know I can't say that someone else isn't going to really appreciate the story that it had. I just I didn't think it was the strongest Marvel feature by any means especially by the storyline there yeah so, and it goes to the point it's like you can't just hide behind cgi you need to actually have a good well written out plot a good story yeah but fan on that note I, I think we're gonna call it quits there as always be sure to like subscribe hit the bells check us out on those things up there and like and subscribe again also if you want to further support the channel consider becoming a member by hitting that join button guys we would greatly appreciate it it's not required but we would love to have you anyway but as always this is cocktail flicks i'm joe i'm dan and we'll catch you on the flip side Cheers to you, fam. Cheers to you, Dan. Cheers to you, Joe. Later, guys. Bye.